So Ernie Ball Music Man guitars are beautiful, extremely well made, sound absolutely incredible. What could possibly be the problem? They don't have anything that's affordable at all. <laughs> So I've been kind of in the market looking for a new number one guitar, and although I've fallen in love with Strandberg guitars, I'm not like a huge fan of the Fishman pickups that they've got equipped in them. The quality of the pickups are fine, and I get why a lot of people like them, but for me as primarily a lead guitar player and not really a rhythm guitar player for what I do, they just don't breathe the way that a nice set of passive pickups does, so I decided to stop by the Ernie Ball website to see how much they really cost these days. And my eyes kind of popped out of my head. Flipping through the website, like the cheapest guitar I could find was basically just a Strat for $2,900, $3,000 for a Luke, $3,600 for the cheapest John Petrucci, and $3,800 for a Jason Richardson Cutlass. Then my eyes really popped out of my head when I saw that they're charging over 6,000 for the highest end Petrucci model. I just find those prices to be eye-watering. I don't know, it's just so much money for all across the line. They don't seem to have anything stripped down that's affordable. I think a good example of this is if you look to Kiesel. You know, Kiesel is made right here in the United States. It's got all the same professional level features as these Sterling guitars. You're gonna get stainless steel frets, but just to get your foot in the door, you can get an Aries for $1,450. You could get a Delos, which is basically that Strat, for $1,400 and you could get a Zeus for $1,500. And like I said, those guitars are made right here in the United States. You're gonna get stainless steel frets. I have a Kiesel that I absolutely love. You know, I know that if you start checking the options boxes that Kiesels are kinda like Porsches, they get eye-wateringly expensive in a hurry. But again, if you're a working musician just looking for something that's gonna sound great, be reliable to record, to gig, to teach on, whatever it might be, man, those Music Man prices are just too high to me. But what about Sterling by Music Man guitars? I'm sure you're asking. Well, I'm glad that you asked, because Sterling guitars, in my opinion, are the most disappointing guitars that I've ever come across in 20 years of playing guitar. I've now taken an in-depth look at three different Sterling guitars, two different John Petrucci 7 strings, and a Jason Richardson Cutlass 7, and they were not good. I've even now made a complete video going into detail about why I think they're so bad, so hit the link if you'd like to see that. The short version is that I find the hardware on the Sterling guitars to be complete junk, especially the bridge. It's basically total trash, doesn't stay in tune, sounds like crap, and I can't recommend it to anyone in good conscience. The only way that a Sterling guitar makes sense is if you can buy it used, secondhand, marked down enough to have the budget to then pick up like a Goto 510 bridge and drop it in there. The good news is that they do just drop right in. I did it for my student Colin's guitar. It took less than 15, 20 minutes in order to change out the bridge, which was awesome. It is a massive upgrade at that point, but it's just, it's a lot of work for a guitar that should come like that probably to start if you're gonna have some sort of a budget model of these higher end instruments. And I do really understand that temptation to look at the Sterling guitars. I was definitely tricked by them for a long time. You know, especially like the John Petrucci model, it's one of the most ergonomic instruments that still has like a traditional guitar body design. Like if you don't wanna go full headless, Strandberg, whatever, you know, the Petrucci body design is so comfortable. And that obviously carries over on the Sterling guitars. They are extremely comfortable to play sitting or standing which is great, but they also don't stay in tune at all, like not even enough to play a single song on them, let alone like a set or teach on them. I just find that it's such a bummer that this great design of an instrument is now out of reach for most people just because the Sterling guitars are bad and the Ernie Ball ones are overpriced. So now that we're about halfway through this video, if you like it, hit like and subscribe. That helps my channel continue to grow, helps the algorithm shine on me slightly. If you don't like the video and you think I'm an idiot, let me know down below. I always like getting trolled. Here, A Minor Error is the creative home for everything that I do musically which is original progressive metal music, which you can find right here on my channel, as well as links down below if you'd like to stream it on Spotify or iTunes. I do in-depth guitar reviews, 
as well as other product reviews and production tips and tricks, and some guitar lessons. The both good and bad thing about Ernie Ball guitars, though, is that they do hold their value rather well. Even on the used market, searching around on either Reverb or eBay, uh, it's really hard to find any that are marked down much at all. Which is great, I guess, if you buy them brand new, you know that your investment, you know, if the day comes where you need to part ways with it, you're not going to lose a ton of money like you will with other brands. But then, the catch of that is that for most people, they're still unaffordable, not even on the used market. At the end of the day, I guess my problem is really more with the way that they've structured the price point on these guitars and the way that I just think that the Sterling guitars are so poor. What I really wish would happen is that they would upgrade the stock hardware on that Sterling guitars to a certain degree that would match other brands more competitively. Or, preferably, just offer a little bit more of a stripped down legit Music Man model. You know, something that starts at more like 1750 to 2200 That's something that is a lot more obtainable for most people. The fact that all of the models basically start at 3000 and up just puts it out of range for most people. You know, if you're really gonna spend that kind of money, I would just buy two Kiesels for it. You're gonna get an instrument that for all intents and purposes performs just as well, and then you've got two of them instead of just one. And in no way is Kiesel paying me or affiliated with this video at all. They do not know that I exist, and they do not know that I love my Vader that I have, but I really think what they're offering at those entry price points just makes some guitar brands, especially like Music Man, their price points just don't make any sense to me. 